for yagna because you know we are offering it to lord and all the other demigods are you know indirectly they are taken care because the main is our lord so we don't really need to offer them directly even if we are doing prasadam for the uh, you know our bhagwan in our houses or in the mandir okay instant interesting you mentioned prasad so what are some of the key things that need to be there uh, otherwise the yagya is in, uh, incomplete uh, we have to offer the f- uh, food which is uh, uh, pure in terms of made with devotion and also uh, whatever we 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 are making or eating with the bhav of you know devotion and offering it to lord mm-hmm. is prasadam okay so uh, so you're saying prasadam needs to be there as part of the yagna yeah anything else anyone uh, one should not limit their progress to moral codes but uh, instead they should take it to their uh, transcendental uh, level to attain krishna consciousness properly okay that's straight out of the pulpit <laughs> okay yes anything else anyone any any other points or like i asked the question what else uh, is recommended that it should be there as part of the yagya and in in kaliyuga what kind of yagya should we do chanting the holy names of god kirtana and sankirtana yagya why not the others because they are all difficult you know we have to follow some uh, rules which are mentioned in the vedas to perform those yagyas and they are now either not feasible or they are little difficult so the easiest and the closest way you know to do yagya is to you know chant the holy names and be the part of you know be with in the association of other devotees and you know listen to kirtans okay yes so the easiest and the most sublime process in uh, the age of kali is chanting the holy names of the lord yes. all right so <clears throat> i think some other essentials uh, for yagna which we mentioned i think is also mentioned in the 17th chapter it's not completed uh, you know without distribution of prasadam without giving out in charity or uh, without satisfying the purohit the person who actually performs the yagna so <clears throat> yeah these are some essentials as well but uh, sankirtan yagya is the most easiest and sublime so we don't need to worry about so many things we just need to chant sincerely and uh, everyone benefits okay let's start with uh, shloka number 13 so yasvatva yasvatva atma ratir eva syad yasvatva atma ratir eva syad atma triptascha manava ट्रांसलेशन बट फॉर वन हू टेक्स प्लेजर इन दिल्फ whose human life is one of self realization and who is satisfied in the self only fully satiated for him there is no duty right so <clears throat> just in the previous verse krishna explains that somebody who doesn't uh, so he was explaining how uh, from i think the 11th and the 12th and 13th verses uh, krishna is explaining that how sacrifice is essential he krishna has given uh, the means of sacrifice along with the creation itself so that uh, you know while we are living here we are happy and it also liberates us and then he talks about how uh, somebody who actually uh, you know uh, devotees are actually released from all kinds of sin uh, if they perform yagyas and uh, even even uh, how we depend completely on rains and from there it, uh, you know food grains come and all of that is dependent uh you know on yagya to perform yagya there will be rain there will be food grains and we can uh you know live essentially it's essential for life 
and uh, then he goes on to explain in the 15th verse that how uh, the different different uh, scriptures or vedas prescribe different types of sacrifices and basically uh, you know the supreme personality of god is actually pleased by that uh, means of sacrifice and even the demigods are satisfied so what is the result of someone who does uh, the sacrifices uh, you know or, or someone who's inclined to do sacrifice is being described here in just the previous verse krishna spoke about uh, you know one who does not follow uh, or one uh, in human life, the cycle of sacrifice as is have established by the Veda certainly leads a life of sin. Living only for satisfaction of senses, such a person lives in vain. So he is neither satisfied in this life, and of course, since his life is centered around sense gratification, uh, his next life definitely is miserable. <laughs> right? But here, <clears throat> Krishna is giving the contrast. But for one who takes pleasure in self, whose human life is one of self-realization and who's satisfied in self only, fully satiated, for him there is no duty. Right? <clears throat> so what is the duty of a self-realized person? Krishna is saying actually he has no duty because he is completely satisfied and uh, satiated. So Prabhupada writes in purport, a person who is fully Krishna conscious is fully satisfied by his acts in Krishna consciousness no longer has any duty to perform due to his being krishna conscious all impiety within is instantly cleansed an effect of many many thousands of yajna performances so if you actually perform different different yajnas uh, thousands of them after thousands and thousands of such performances you might reach a stage where all the impieties of dirt in the heart is gone right because again all these yajnas involve a lot of things uh, and it may go on for years and thousands of years also sometimes. So thousands of such yajna performances may lead to impieties in the heart being cleansed. Mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so a person who, uh, but the same result can be achieved by somebody who is practicing Krishna consciousness wholeheartedly uh, and, and by the means of chanting Hare Krishna fully cleanses his heart, right? For such a person, he doesn't have any duty to perform. Right? He's not obliged to perform any such duty, any other duty. He's not uh, obliged to the forefathers. He's not obliged to the sages. He's not obliged to the demigods. Uh, you know, he's actually free from all that obligation. Just uh, by the dint of performing uh, the Sankirtan Yajna. So, because that itself is like, uh, you know, purifying the three worlds. In fact, uh, we go on Mayapur Parikrama. So one of the Mahatmyas of Mayapur Parikrama is that every step that you take in that Parikrama, Vrindavan Parikrama or Mayapur Parikrama. So Mayapur Parikrama particularly, this is described in the Mahatmya. Every step that you take, the entire universe is benefited, not just you. Right? So someone right now, uh, and Mayapur, by the way, is the uh, birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. So for those who don't know, Mayapur is the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya the most merciful incarnation so just look at the mercy of the dham right even right now somebody uh, you know doing parikrama taking a few steps every step is benefiting the entire universe not just himself not just a small community entire universe right and in fact it is described how because there are pure devotees on the planet or because there's devotion to krishna krishna's name is being sung the, uh, like last time we were describing, Mother Nature is obliged to supply the resources. Otherwise, you know, uh, she's not obliged to supply resources. She can stop the way things are going. <laughs> she would have stopped way back, right? But uh, because the uh, Sankirtan Yajna is being performed, therefore, uh, you know, Mother Nature is supplying all the resources. In fact, I am just remembering the opening of uh, Sri Mayapurdham Temple. So it is typically said, uh, you know, so such temple openings or auspicious events or even deity installation, they are definitely accompanied with Kirtan. And uh, it is very, very, very auspicious if it rains. So uh, His Holiness Lokanath Swami Maharaj was there. He was doing Kirtan. Uh, in fact, there were many groups who did Kirtan and then Lokanath Swami Maharaj, he came and he started Kirtan. Five or ten minutes into his kirtan, it rained like anything, poured like anything, right? And the Supreme Lord is satisfied. Nature is, you know, also happily providing or 
uh, you know, profusely supplying uh, the resources. So that's practical. Uh, we can actually see it. In fact, uh, a few years earlier, I think there was almost like a, uh, you know, dry situation, very, very long dry spell and very hot summers uh, in North India, uh, especially in MP and Delhi side, etc. So I remember uh, a lot of people were trying to do so many things. And uh, there was this group of devotees who had uh, taken up, you know, I think 48 hours Kirtan, right? So two days constantly chanting, 48 hours Kirtan Mela they did. So different, different groups, they came and, you know, 48 hours continuously the Kirtan went. And uh, I think just after some 30 hours, it poured heavily. So, yeah, that's, that's how Mother Nature is also obliged. So here we are describing how a person who is fully Krishna conscious doesn't have any other obligations. Uh, as such, by the dint of being engaged fully in Krishna consciousness. By such clearing of consciousness, one becomes fully confident of his eternal position and relationship with the Supreme. His duty thus becomes self-illuminated by the grace of the Lord. Therefore, he has no longer any obligations to Vedic injunctions. Such a Krishna conscious person no longer interested in material activities, no longer takes pleasure in material arrangements like wine, woman and similar infatuations. So, uh, I mean, there are a few examples. Lord Chaitanya himself, uh, you know, he left home when he was very, very young, about 24 years old. Uh, you know, he, he left behind a very young wife, uh, that was Mother Lakshmi herself, rather, and uh, Sachi Mata. And, and for a higher cause of spreading Krishna consciousness, he took sannyas at the age of 24, right? For him, uh, you know, somebody may say, Are, you know, how can you leave somebody like that? But... Uh, since, I mean, of course, that's the Lord himself, but for someone also who's completely Krishna conscious, uh, you know, it is fine. For him, because he's, he's going out for higher cause or a, a higher good, just like soldiers, uh, you know, they go. At a very young age, they are there on the border, right? And the mothers feel proud. Uh, the wives also, obviously, they, they, there is a, you know, they feel the pangs of separation from their son or from their husbands, etc., but at the same time, they are very, very proud that, you know, uh, their son or their husband are actually at the border fighting for the country. They realize that, yes, this is higher cause, serving the nation. Similarly, uh, you know, for someone who's, uh, who's renounced his, uh, you know, family and all the material attachments for a higher cause, for serving uh, others, uh, you know, or, or mm -hmm. helping them, uh, you know, become Krishna conscious, it is fine. Yeah, if you're if you're just leaving your family and then doing some nonsense, <laughs> obviously you know there is karma for not fulfilling your duties towards your parents and towards your relatives. There is karma. You have you are obliged. The minute you take birth, you have obligations to a lot of people, right? Not and not just somebody you can perceive. Even others like like I mentioned, the sages, the demigods, and so many others, right? Even the air you breathe, right? It's being supplied to you for free. You're not paying anything for it, right? In the water you drink, I mean, yeah, you can say <laughs> you're paying water tax, but at least, you know, something so essential, which is oxygen, right? You're getting for free. Anyone paid for it? If you went to a hospital, that's a different story. They will charge you, but the Lord doesn't, right? So all these resources we are consuming, right? Uh, it's like given free to us. So, uh, we are actually obliged. Okay. His duty becomes self-illuminated. Yeah. So, for people who are self-realized or somebody who you know, takes pleasure in self, for such a person, he is no longer obligated also because he, does, he doesn't have to do anything with the material world. Right? He is happy within himself. Why? Because uh, he is completely Krishna conscious. He has his duty is completely... Uh, you know, clear in his mind, his duty is towards Krishna and how he needs to act is extremely clear, right? Uh, so just like Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> he was struggling alone uh, in the beginning days before he went to the West. He was struggling alone. He went city to city uh, to collect some donation. He was working so hard, uh, sometimes not even eating, but saving that money to actually go out and print. 
In fact, the printer who would print the back to Goddard magazines in the early days, sometimes he would look at Prabhupada and get him some breakfast because he would know that oh, Prabhupada must have not eaten, but he is so dedicated to collect money so that he can print the back to Goddard magazine. So uh, he could clearly see that, right? So Prabhupada, although you know he went through such difficult times, you know he went to different cities where he was not even knowing whether he will have some place to stay or not. But completely depending on Krishna, fearless, literally fearless, right? And that's something we'll also look at in some consecutive verses. He went, right? Completely depending on the Lord, right? So because his duty became self illuminated it was very clear what he has to follow the instructions of his spiritual master is completely focused right and therefore had no other no longer any obligations to the vedic inventions such a krishna conscious person no longer interested in material activities no longer takes pleasure in material arrangements like wine women similar infatuations so Shri Prabhupada was in that difficult condition in contrast uh, he was also later on uh, you know when when he uh, actually start the Krishna conscious movement uh, ISKCON uh, in the West. Later, uh, later part of the year, in the 11 years, he had opportunities where, you know, people invited him in their luxurious houses, uh, right, sent big, big cars to, you know, get him from the airport. And things were arranged so wonderfully, right? But he never got attached to anything. He saw it sim uh, similarly as he was in the previous situation. In fact, he said, uh, you know, Mayapur, we are, we can, you know, live in this small uh, grass hut also, but just for others, we are building the temple because they won't come to a grass hut. They will come to a nice palatial temple, will attract them and they'll be able to see the Lord in his deity form and, uh, you know, get the benefit of hearing the holy names. So, uh, and, and I mean, I have so many, <laughs> I'm just remembering so many examples. Like once uh, Shri Prabhupada landed in Paris and uh, for the first time, and the devotees, they were waiting at the airport, you know, with nice garlands and everything. Uh, they were waiting for Sri Prabhupada to come out of the gate. And at the same time, uh, there was this uh, person who was, uh, there was this uh, minister who was waiting for uh, the ambassador of uh, one of the countries. I'm not remembering which country. Uh, from India only, sorry. She was waiting from, for an Indian ambassador to come. And some of the other in, in confusion in her office, she forgot to do any good arrangement for welcoming of this Indian ambassador. So she was really feeling embarrassed at the airport, not having anything in her hand <laughs> to, you know, nicely welcome the person. So she saw, uh, you know, these group of Hare Krishna devotees, you know, they're, uh, they're waiting for Shil Prabhupada with, you know, all kinds of things in their hands, like flowers and garlands and so many things. And they're doing nice, uproaring kirtan. So she thought, okay, let me ask if someone can help me. And she approached one of the devotees and she requested, can, can you, you know, the Indian ambassador is coming right now. Can you help me welcome him nicely? You know, you guys are chanting the Vedic mantras, etc., And you have so many garlands. If you can just, you know, welcome him also very, very nicely. So, you know, the devote, some devotees, they obliged them, fine, no problem. And, uh, you know, the Indian ambassador arrived at the airport and, you know, the devotees garlanded him. They greeted him with Namaste and Hare Krishna and all of that. And the Indian ambassador felt very, very nicely welcome. So this lady, she wanted to do something in return. And, uh, you know, uh, then, then she asked, what can I do for you guys? Thank you so much. So this devotee, he asked, uh, okay, our spiritual master is also just arriving, right? And, uh, you know, if you can honor him in some way, you know, he's coming for the first time to France and to Paris. If you can honor him in some way. So uh, the lady said, sure, why not? So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll arrange for him to actually uh, visit the governor's house and, uh, you know, give an, uh, you know, arrival address there. So, and it's very rare. <laughs> it's very, very rare for someone to actually get that opportunity. So uh, Shri Prabhupada had arrived and, uh, you know, uh, he was taken to the governor's house and, uh, you know, uh, the governor of uh, Paris himself welcomed Srila Prabhupada, you know, nicely made him sit. And, and uh, while he was addressing for the first time uh, in the history of that house, uh, only Srila Prabhupada was sitting. Everyone else was standing, <laughs> right? It was never in the history when, you know, the governor is addressing, people would sit. Prabhupada never bothered about anything, you know, like, okay, you know, this is the governor, I should also stand and stuff like that. He was completely... 
uh, cognizant that he served the Lord and, you know, he is in a situation where he needs to address. And then he gave his address uh, and, and uh, described how, you know, uh, I think that time there was some context uh, in 1970s. Uh, the government was trying to, you know, do some reforms, etc. So Prabhupada described what is a real social reform and in fact almost went ahead to instruct the governor how she, he should run. Uh, so that real benefit of people is, uh, you know, uh, given. So he did not care or he did not think, hey, you know, I should maybe be slightly diplomatic and uh, not, you know, try to instruct the governor or, you know, talk about, you know, the, uh, the government not running or functioning nicely. Not that he pointed out administrative issues, but he pointed out how there's a basic lack of uh, push from the government side to, uh, help pe people become God conscious. So he did not care for any of these things, any external arrangements. He he was there to speak the truth and he spoke the truth. Right? So, he, and, and he maintained this no matter whom he met. In fact, he had <laughs> such a skill to talk to, you know, uh, people from, uh, you know, rich backgrounds and very, very wealthy and powerful people. And he would be so candid. Uh, you know, Henry Ford, uh, you know, he came, uh, Alfred Ford, sorry, Henry Ford, my bad, Henry Ford came, or Alfred Ford Prabhu, what's uh, Prabhu's name, I think, Alfred Ford, right? Henry yeah. Ford, I'm sorry. Alfred. Uh, so, Alfred Ford had come and he paid obeisances to Shri Prabhupada, met him for the first time, devotees had introduced, and as he was getting up, Prabhupada asks, so, where is Henry Ford now? Right. And everyone knew Henry Ford has died. <laughs> Prabhupada purposely asked that question. And immediately the whole, you know, thing with which Alfred Prabhu came with, okay, I'm from a rich background, this and that, was smashed completely in that one question, where is Henry Ford now? Immediately he realized that, you know, every, everything around, even all this is external and will go away after some time. I'll have to give it up. So what am I pride, or proud about? <laughs> I immediately was smashed. So, yeah, <clears throat> so for a self-realized person, his path is completely illuminate, uh, illuminated uh, and, and he knows what his duty is and he speaks, uh, you know, be, being the via media of the Lord. Yeah. And he's not attached to, okay, you know, this person is giving me a, a big house to stay. Let me be polite to him. In fact, one more story of Prabhupada. So Prabhupada got, had gone to Japan and, uh, you know, these the devotees had, uh, you know, very, very difficult situation there was and some of the other, you know, devotees had arranged for uh, this this person and uh, the Indian, there was an Indian person who was kind of associated with the Mayavadi Guru. So somehow they convinced him this person had given a building <laughs> through the devotees to actually start a temple. And uh, this, this person had invited, okay, you know, uh, his Guru and even Prabhupada to come and speak. Prabhupada was visiting Japan. And then, uh, you know, he he asked his guru, uh, you know, the Mayavadi guru to first speak. And this Mayavadi guru was speaking, speaking. Then Prabhupada was, uh, you know, listening, okay, hmm, okay. He was speaking from scriptures only. Then suddenly he came to a point that, you know, there is no God or, uh, you know, we are only God or uh, to a point that, you know, God has no form, etc. And Prabhupada could not tolerate, <laughs> right? So immediately, then when his turn came, in fact, he before his turn came, he asked the devotee, start Kirtan. Right? So in the middle of the, you know, Mayavadi speaking, the devotee started up in the uproarious Kirtan and he could not speak any further. So that's how it ended. And, uh, you know, uh, Prabhupada said, it's okay, even if he doesn't give us a building, it's okay. We don't need such kind of a cooperation, right? Where the Supreme Lord is blasphemed and, uh, you know, they will just interfere every time. So he, he didn't care that somebody is giving you know, crores of rupees or, you know, a million dollar building, an entire building. He didn't care. He, he described that how Krishna is uh, self-sufficient, right? He's not a beggar, <laughs> right? We don't need somebody's money on compromising the principles. So Krishna will provide. He was fully confident. Sorry, I spoke for a very long time. Any thoughts and reflections and Prabhuji, if you want to add something? No, 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 thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone, any thoughts or reflections on this? Should we move ahead otherwise?
Okay. Let's move ahead in that case. Reshma, do you have anything to say? Or she just ran? Uh, I just, uh, uh, I mean, Prabhuji, uh, I was just thinking about the self-realization thing. Um, what is exactly uh, makes a person uh, to self-realize? What, what makes him to think about the self-realization or how it comes? Um, somebody, uh, you know, to be aware about self, uh, does he need somebody to help him or uh, I mean it is within himself that okay I should uh, do this thing or I mean to be aware of everything hmm. so what makes it what makes a person to self-realize okay so first of all let's understand the definition of self-realization before getting to how someone gets uh, self-realization or how he becomes self-realized <clears throat> so what is the definition of self-realization according to you? Um, actually, it's a broad topic uh, according to me. Hmm. Self-realization uh, according to me, like hmm. what is me exactly hmm. in this world hmm. uh, and uh, how, how I can, you know, resonate that thing with the world. Hmm. Uh, what exactly is my duty or um what is my existence uh, here hmm. what other how others are affecting me or how i affect others mm -hmm. like everything it's a broad topic prabhuji uh, i mean can go on and on on this okay okay so <clears throat> how uh, or anyone has any other thoughts self realization What is self-realization? Uh, for me, I think for self-realization, many people would have different definitions, you know, according to their own understanding. So for me, self-realization uh, is, uh, you know, uh, looking inside and getting, you know, being aware about it. As, you know, we've been reading and knowing that, you know, we have this part and parcel of God inside us. And somewhere because we are not aware and you know we are uh, blinded with the material world we are not realizing the presence of that and once we realize the presence of that part and parcel inside i think that would be some kind of self realization just being aware that something you know we are bit and bites of the supreme lord so uh, i think uh, you're almost there but you just missed out a small point but in any case, I'll just hear uh, some other thoughts and then maybe describe. So anyone else, what is self-realization? Hi, can I say something on a lighter note, Vijay, no, if please. that's okay? This is Preeti. It's, it's on a lighter note. Please, no offense yes. to anyone. Yes, I, I think it's a brilliant question asked and, I, I, you know, I've pondered about it. And I, I, and I realized that um, only the person who self-realized can probably share this. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's an experiential thing. So while we, we can read about it, like, you know, this reminds me of the question which I had asked you in initial classes that, you know, how do you know that you're established in Krishna consciousness? So you have to experience it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so on a lighter note, I'm saying this. No, it's, it's perfect. In fact, <laughs> it's, it's a very, uh, you know, good realization. Yes. But of course, what we have read is, you know, knowing yourself, who you are and the truth of this existence and how you are a part of that bigger thing and there is inclusiveness you know so which means when they say you and me are not different somewhere we are same you know at some level okay i don't know this is what i've read somewhere okay <laughs> thank you thanks thanks for sharing that any other thoughts introspection and correcting yourself okay any, anyone else uh, guruji trying to understand the purpose of life Mm -hmm. I'm also trying to understand uh, why we have come to this world, who we are. That will also lead to self-realization. Perfect. Yes. Very nice. Any last thought? One more. <laughs> Understanding that we are the soul and uh, we should uh, do our duties and go back to Gaurav Prindavan. Perfect. 
so yes i mean uh, i think a lot of great answers so what is self realization <clears throat> so like i think shelza we were describing to real realize that you know something there is uh, you know part and parcel of god within within me uh, just to realize that so i think just a small correction there it's you you are that part and parcel of the lord right it's not it's inside you in fact there is a covering outside <laughs> right that is a body but the part and parcel is you yourself right so understanding that i am not this body i am the spirit soul yes that's one level of self realization for sure uh and, and and that's that's what i mean we read right krishna is describing to arjuna right in the beginning that you're not this body of the soul but to actually realize and live uh you know that is known as self realization and uh, it is described jivera swarupa hoy krishner nityadas that is a real ego there is false ego false ego is oh i am a doctor i am a lawyer i am son of so and so my name is so and so right this false ego there are different designations or upadhis that we carry real real uh, ego is that i am the servant of the lord right because the soul by nature is part and parcel of the lord and this is not my version this is version of the scriptures right so what is self realization or uh, let's let's look at realization okay versus information and realization two different things a man is walking on the street and uh, you know there is truck coming from behind and uh, you know this guy is right in the middle of the road and you shout are you know there is a truck coming from behind It'll smash it just just move right and the guy says oh i know i know just continues walking there you shout again are it's really close you know in any second you'll be smashed just move he says i know i know right. what is this is this information is it just knowledge or information is there any realization in this for the man who is walking does he realize does he have the realization of the information how grievous or how uh, critical the situation is is he having a realization no no right he he heard the information yes fine okay theek hai right but he's not realizing that he'll be killed <laughs> right so if there is realization what will the man do he will move away guru ji immediately right yes the minute he realizes that there's danger he jump off the road <laughs> run for his life from the side so that's that's realization realized knowledge right so right now what we are going through right is we are taking oh you know we are not this body with the soul a soul is servant of the lord okay right all this is information realization will happen slowly and steadily when you apply this knowledge right and someone who step by step has applied and advanced <clears throat> with with more and more application right he will realize more and more right just like <clears throat> sorry just like uh you know so a student he may study some physical laws in the school but then when he actually practically applies that in the lab that's where he realizes so many other acha aise hota hai right oh it reacts like this the teacher was saying you know uh, it will turn into this color or you know the magnet will push the other ball on the other side this how exactly it is happening when he actually practically experiences like i think priti was describing right there is higher realization right the the the, uh, the knowledge is reinforced with an experience so there is higher realization right when you actually uh, you know pray to the lord and the lord reciprocates there is a realization so it bo- it's both ways understanding you know the uh, you know not just hearing not just gathering information but practically applying that knowledge right will give you more and more realizations and slowly and steadily what is self realization self realization is nothing but 
understanding what the scriptures are describing, understanding that we are not this body, we are the soul, and we are eternal servants of the Lord. Like I said, Jivera Swarup Hoy, Krishna Nityadas. The more and more the heart is cleansed through performance of yajna, is what the shloka was talking about, right? Through performance of the Sanketan yajna, the more and more that dust is cleared. And I think somebody mentioned it's already in there, it's natural, right? So Krishna consciousness is already there, right? It's not that you have to get it from somewhere else, it's already there. It's the natural position of the soul. The more and more that dirt is, you know, uh, cleansed, we realize, oh, yeah, I have to act in a way where, you know, I need to serve the Lord. And therefore, for a self-realized person, he realizes I'm the servant of the Lord. His path is self-illuminated. He knows how to act in relationship with Krishna. He doesn't have to, you know, think, Are, abhi kya okay, self-realization, okay, what to do? He won't have this question. He will know exactly what he needs to do, uh, what service he needs to do. Uh, does that answer the question? I'm not sure who asked the question because somehow I couldn't see <laughs> you know, the person. Yeah, I asked, I have asked the question, uh, Prabhuji. Huh. Yes, it's slow, uh, making me like think about what what you have seen, uh, like um, to get, get to know more about the scriptures, following the processes. So slowly, then when you follow this, slowly you will realize slowly slowly it's a gradual thing perfect yes it's a gradual thing and uh, the more you interact or try to serve the lord right depend on him the more realizations you'll have okay i still cannot figure out i don't know why otherwise normally there is like an outline of somebody who's speaking <laughs> so what's the name Arjit? i don't know what if there is some setting which i kind of turned off because otherwise, normally when somebody speaks, there is like an outline around their uh, names. I can see Partha Priyabhu also right now, trying to say something. Reshma Mataji. Reshma. Okay, okay. So, uh, any other thoughts or Prabhuji, you want to add something? On self-realization. No, I think, Ruji, you just wonderfully described the whole process, how it all happens. Yeah, it's just a realization of who I am as a living entity. Who is God? What is my relationship with Him? In in modern terms, in modern days, this term is very often used in corporates, in social circles, self-realization. It, it's used to indicate many different things in the modern world. It's called self-actualization. That's uh, one of the top of the pyramid for Maslow's <laughs> pyramid. Yeah. yeah, so it means many different things to many people, but we only are going by what the scriptures tell us. What Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mamai Vam Jiva Loka. All living entities are my part and parcel. So, uh, we gradually realize, and as Prabhuji said, that the more that realization comes, the more natural it becomes for one to engage in devotional service. And like in the previous verse where it was said, such a person is not interested in wine, woman, or any other such infatuation. It becomes very natural. For us, it's like a, uh, trying to control and trying to restrain ourselves from different sense objects. But when one realizes his actual position, uh, it's very natural that he is restraining and moving away from this and engaging in service of the Lord. So, <laughs> you don't need to depend on, you know, some pep talk by, uh, you know, some so-called quote-unquote you know, uh, motivational speakers or someone describing, oh, you have to be conscious of everything around you, hear the sound and this and that. You don't need all of that. Krishna is directly describing what is self-realization. He is giving the symptoms step by step. Even the shloka is giving the symptoms of what a self-realized man or a person is, right? If you just simply read Bhagavad Gita very nicely and scrutinizingly, you will know what it is. Yeah. And Prabhuji, it starts happening naturally. When you try to apply something, it doesn't happen. It's just with that devotion, it's just with that feel, things starts to happen, you know. Then everyone would be at a different level of self-realization also, depending upon, you know, how, how, how much they are progressing and how much they want to progress. So, I, like, for me, in my whatever, 
i am not you know not a uh, this thing but i'm just saying that whatever i have learned in my journey that just the devotion just surrender and things starts to follow you know you won't even realize you know every door will start opening you know slowly and slowly it will just start opening sure so yeah i mean when krishna reciprocates you no like i think uh, someone was asking or maybe it was uh, reshma who was asking how would we know that we are uh, you know moving towards self realization so the question will be uh, if you are eating how will you know that you are being satisfied or you are being uh, your stomach is getting filled how will you know prabhu ji it's the feel we feel that our stomach is full now yeah you automatically no nobody has to tell you are baba you are full <laughs> or you know now you are satisfied nobody will have to tell you right you automatically no right because it's your own personal experience mm-hmm. similarly uh, when krishna reciprocates or when krishna is pleased with you with your service you will automatically know and the symptom is you automatically you will feel happy naturally you will feel happy nobody will have to tell you oh, krishna is pleased with you <laughs> right if you serve krishna you will naturally feel happy you will know that oh krishna is satisfied therefore i'm feeling happy right when you water the roots everything everyone else is satisfied so others also will be satisfied with you i mean that is still subjective but at least you will feel happy immediately right can i add something vijay quickly here sure sure and is that okay if i call you vijay i'm sorry i find That's little uncomfortable good. to call you prabhu ji I, i mean but i do respect you i just want to say as a teacher but yeah That's maybe good. i'll take some time to get into that groove so uh, you know when you're saying that you know you will be happy i just wanted to share quickly this um, uh, in two lines that um you know i started chanting about i think in the month of april when i had shared with you guys that i had covid and at that time it was more you know that praying that please mujhe theek kar do and all of that thing <laughs> but but i think once i was up and about i think from last couple of months i have noticed this thing and i'm very happy to share that i look forward to chanting now that's one uh, second not even a single day i have missed chanting and last is that i have increased my chanting rounds and i'm diligently doing it 3 in the morning and 2 at night before sleeping so i'm doing 5 rounds of chanting and and yesterday only i was telling my sister that i feel so much of joy that i look forward and i don't feel time kab khatam hoga or mm-hmm. mai kab songi like yesterday i had so much of work even if i slept at 2 o'clock but i still still chanted and i wanted to it's like there's no pushing nobody is telling me and i'm feeling the joy in chanting itself forget about what krishna is giving me right now that's a different story <laughs> it's amazing hari hari bol <laughs> so so i and one fine day i don't know why i had this um, you know kind of uh, nudge inside that i should go to the temple i have been to iskon temple earlier also mm-hmm. so i think one wednesday i went uh, to the temple i spent half an hour there 12:30 to 1 was the aarti time i attended that and i was very happy about it so i feel that i am now getting connected to krishna in some <laughs> because i'm happy about it <laughs> and and i i personally don't like when somebody pushes me to do something so it's coming from within <laughs> thank you so much friends for listening <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that and it's really really amazing thank you uh, for you know motivating us i i pray that maybe someday i get that taste <laughs> very nice thank you so much for sharing thank okay. you priti for sharing thanks a lot and uh, i must thank priya who introduced me to these classes and i must thank vijay and uh, parth priya for doing such a great job because i sometimes wonder this is such a difficult topic but i think they try their level best to make it easy for us so thank you so much and uh, even i wanted to share something even though i read my geeta in the morning but this class it adds on a lot of you know other part of it which while i am reading it i i sometimes i miss on you know so it is really uh, it's it's really wonderful thank you thank you so much yeah, it's shri prabhupad who's uh, made it so simple for us and uh, through his purpose 
he's been you know detailing out so many finer things which you would in general miss out so yes all glory to shri prabhupad okay so <clears throat> i think uh, let's move on to the next shloka naiva tasya krite nartho naiva tasya krite nartho na krite na kashchana na krite na kashchana ट्रांसलेशनोज A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties, nor has he any reason not to perform such work, nor has he any need to depend on any other living being. Yeah, very important. So again, I mean, a little out of our field, but good to know. Uh, you know what's what's the goal? So a self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in discharge of his prescribed duties. because he's not obliged and he nor he has any reason not to perform such work so here's the flip side of things he has no reason not to perform such work nor has he any need to depend on other living beings because krishna is the maintainer he is fulfilling everything right he doesn't need to depend like we saw the example robert is not dependent on some rich man to give him a building he is saying krishna is not a beggar you know he will provide <laughs> so uh proper describing the purpose a self realized man is no longer obliged to perform any prescribed duty save and except activities in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is not in activity either as will be explained in the following verses a krishna conscious man does not take shelter of any person man or demigod whatever he does in krishna consciousness is sufficient in the discharge of his of his obligation someone who is fully focused who is uh, completely krishna conscious or self realized he doesn't need to take any other shelter right and uh, quickly i'll touch upon a story of jad bharat i'm sure i think i've related this before but very very apt here so uh, jad bharat actually was king bharat in his previous life uh, you know because of uh, you know uh, a mishap or a fall down uh, not really a fall down but yeah because of some small mistake he kind of got attached to a deer and then uh, you know he had to be born as a deer and then after that life he took birth again and the uh, family of a brahmana as jad bharat right and there uh, you know cutting the long story short and uh, so once he, he he used to act dumb and deaf and he was completely cognizant of his previous two lives by the grace of the uh, lord and uh, he decided that this life i am not going to have any slip downs and i will be completely focused and not you know engage with anyone so there won't be any attachment so he used to act dumb and deaf <laughs> but he was completely absorbed constantly in the thoughts of the lord so once he was uh, you know uh, guarding the fields because he was he was considered as dumb and you know so he was given such kind of work to do so he was guarding the fields and uh, you know there were some uh, people who were actually worshipers of kali so they wanted you know uh, a human sacrifice for in front of kali so they actually captured him tied him and took him uh, you know uh, for bali <laughs> so uh, when they were about to kill him jad bharat maharaj was not praying oh lord please save me right what is this i'm chanting your names i'm thinking of you and these guys are killing me he was completely dependent on the lord right maro bhi rakho bhi jo ichha to har is one of the famous lines from one of the vaishnava songs so he is completely dependent if lord wants me to be killed i'll, I'll be killed if he wants me wants me to be saved i'll be saved it's okay whatever the lord desires i will not waste my time on anything i just keep meditating on the lord so he did not care i mean and we should not imitate <laughs> again right we are not at that level so we should avoid imitating right we are not prahlad maharaj who will push from the mountain and you know he is still thinking of the lord no uh, we won't be able to think of the lord when we are pushed our faith will be shattered right there so if you're not in that uh, level or situation you should not imitate you should try to save ourselves but here 
you know them being self realized completely so uh, jadavant maharaj was, did not care ki you know what is happening and the minute he was about to be you know slaughtered in front of uh, goddess kali so kali she could not tolerate because you know he is such a great vaishnava and she cannot tolerate vaishnava aparad in front of her so immediately the dt form actually you know kali actually came and killed all these dacoits or uh, goons who were trying to <coughs> kill kill jad bharat so we can see how is completely dependent and uh, he was it's not uh, he was not obliged or not uh, you know had to do something external or had to surrender to you know some person oh no no you know i'll serve you please don't kill me or beg to kali are please help me no automatically she came and killed because she could not tolerate vaishnava right okay. so whatever a krishna conscious person does it's uh, he is fully confident right that it is sufficient for him to go back home back to god right or or uh, i don't need to do anything other than this right krishna bhakti kaila sarva karma krita haya right shraddha shabde vishwas kahe sudrida nischaya krishna bhakti kaila sarva karma krita haya he is fully confident that he has no other obligations to any specific demigod or anyone if he is you know absorbed in uh, activities of krishna consciousness absorbed in chanting the holy names of the lord prabhu ji you want to add anything Oh, no okay. okay we move a little fast uh, i had to cover the last maybe one or two more verses ha huh. okay yeah after this i think two more verses so we'll just read these uh, and nahi actually okay tasma dasakta satatam tasma dasakta satatam karyam karma samachara ट्रांसलेशन कि therefore without being attached to the fruits of activities one should act as a matter of duty for by working without attachment one attains the supreme right so therefore without being attached to fruits of activities right nishkam karma yoga krishna is prescribing here one should act as a matter of duty by working without attachment uh, one should act as a matter of duty for by working without attachment one attains the supreme so prabhu is describing the supreme personality of god uh the supreme is a personality of god for devotees and liberation for the impersonals a person therefore acting for krishna or in krishna consciousness under proper guidance and without attachment to the results of work is certainly making progress towards supreme goal of life arjuna is told that he should fight in the battle of kurukshetra for the interest of krishna because krishna wanted him to fight to be a good man or non violent man is a personal attachment but to act on behalf of the supreme is to act without attachment for results that is perfect action of highest degree recommended by the supreme personality of god shri krishna so everyone must have heard the example uh, how you know krishna asked yudhishthir maharaj to say a lie right and yudhishthir maharaj was such a personality who had never lied in fact uh he was so righteous that uh, you know he would actually not touch the ground his feet would not touch the ground he was actually uh, almost like a few uh, inches or feet above the ground because he never lied because he was so righteous but then krishna asked him say ashwatthama hata right <laughs> say ashwatthama got killed and only that is the only way to kill dronacharya and he was hesitating because he had never lied how can he you know break his uh, his vow of being truthful so then uh, you know actually a elephant had to be killed by the name ashwatthama <laughs> right and then bhima actually smashed his head and the elephant died and then uh, yudhishthir maharaj was asked okay now say even then he hesitated and uh, you know he said ashwatthama hatah and then very silently he said uh, narova kunjarova 
I'm not sure whether it's a man or it's an uh, elephant or an animal. <clears throat> Very pol- silently, so that you know, Dronacharya doesn't hear. hear. <laughs> so, uh, although he followed the instructions of Krishna, but there was hesitation, right? So that that morality, uh, our morality should also not come in the way of serving Krishna. That's the idea or point, right? Because what is highest morality to actually, uh, you know, follow uh, the instructions of the Lord, right? To be a good man or non-violent man is a personal attachment. But to act on behalf of the Supreme is to act without attachment for results, right? A uh, soldier on the battlefield cannot think, Are, goli maru ke maru, ya? Uske bhi bivi honge, right? Although he's coming, you know, in the border, you know, maybe he's along with some bombs, etc. But, you know, he also has a family. Starts thinking like this, what will happen? <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> that is perfect action of the highest degree recommended by the Supreme Lord, Supreme Personality of God, Shri Krishna. Vedic rituals like prescribed sacrifices are performed for purification of impious activities that were performed in the field of sense gratification. So, Vedic rituals are meant to purify our heart. But action in Krishna consciousness is transcendental to reactions of good or evil. So when you act on behalf of Krishna, there is no good or bad results. It's called a karma. A Krishna conscious person has no attachment for the results, but acts on behalf of Krishna alone. He engages in all kinds of activities, but is completely non-attached. So even if in service, right, uh, you know, although you start with the result in his mind, but even if the result doesn't come, you still depend on Krishna. Fine. Okay. The Lord wanted it this way. I tried my best. That's fine. Right? So he's not attached. He doesn't give up his service because, oh, result ni mila bhi kya. You know, I was doing it for you only, Lord. Why did this not happen? And all of that. No. He keeps endeavoring. Like Prabhupada, he went through so many difficulties and, you know, people were not listening to him. <laughs> right? He was trying to preach in India first. He had just one disciple. So he did not give up. Okay. Uh, next to shlokas are kind of connected. We quickly go through. I just wanted to kind of cover this. Karmanneva hi samsiddhim. Karmanneva hi samsiddhim. Astita janakadaya. Astita janakadaya. Loka sangraham evapi. Loka sangraham evapi. Okay, translation. Shall I read Prabhuji? Yes. Uh, King such as Janaka attained perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. Yeah. So, uh, if you remember the shloka, karmani vadikaraste, right? Mahafaleju kadachana. So, Krishna there also is saying, never be attached to not doing your duty. In the previous verse, Krishna has described that, uh, you know, the self-realized person, he's not obliged to do anything. Uh, any, any, he's not obliged to do any uh, prescribed duties. and But he has no reason for not doing it. And then he gives an example, kings such as Janaka attained perfection solely by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for, just for sake of educating people in general, you should perform your work. So these are Mahajanas. Janak Maharaj is also one of the Mahajanas, right? They actually perform prescribed duties just for sake of educating others, right? So that they set a good example, right? Uh, and Prabhupada here in the Prabhupada is describing king, kings like Janaka were self-realized souls. Consequently, they had no obligation to perform the prescribed duties in Vedas. Nonetheless, they performed all prescribed activities just to set examples for people in general. Janaka was father of Sita and father-in-law of Lord Sri Ram. Being a great devotee of the Lord, he was transcendentally situated. But because he was king of Mithila, a subdivision uh, of Bihar province in India, he had to teach his subjects how to perform prescribed duties. Lord Krishna and Arjuna the Lord's eternal friend had no need to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, but they fought to teach people in general that violence is also necessary in a situation where good argument fails. Before the battle of Kurukshetra, every effort was made to avoid the war, even by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the other party was determined to fight. 
So for such a righteous cause, there is a necessity for fighting. Although one who is situated in Krishna consciousness may not have any interest in the world, he still works to teach the public how to live and how to act. Experienced persons in Krishna consciousness can act in such a way that others will follow. And this is explained in the following verse. So we'll jump to the next verse, which is connected. Yad yad acharati shreshthas. Yad yad acharati shreshthas. Tat tat evetaro jana. Tat tat evetaro jana. Sayat parmananam. Sayat parmananam kuram. Sorry. Locus tad anuvartate. Locus tad anuvartate. Sayat Pramanam Kurute Lokastat Anuvartate. Okay. Translation, anyone can read quickly? Can I read, Prabhuji? Yes, please. Whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Okay. So, Krishna is describing, you know, uh, whatever the leaders do, the common people follow. So whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he set by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. People in general always require a leader who can teach the public by practical behavior. A leader cannot teach the public to stop smoking if he smokes himself, if he himself smokes. Lord Chaitanya said that the teacher should be uh, should behave properly before he begins teaching. One who teaches in that way is called Acharya. Acharya means one who teaches by his own acharan, right, by his own behavior or ideal teacher. Therefore, a teacher must follow the principles of Shastra scriptures to teach the common man. Teacher cannot manufacture rules against the principles of the revealed scriptures. The revealed scriptures like Manu Samhita and similar others are considered the standard books to be followed by human society. Thus, a leader's teaching should be based on the principles of such standard Shastras. One who desires to improve himself must follow the standard rules as they are uh, practiced by the great teachers. The Srimad Bhagavatam also affirms that one should follow in the footsteps of great devotees and that is a way of progress on the path of spiritual realization. The king or the executive head of the state, the father, the school teacher and, uh, are all considered to be natural leaders of innocent people in general. So the king, the uh, executive head of the state, father and school teacher. They are considered natural leaders of innocent people in general. All such natural leaders have a great responsibility to their dependents. Therefore, they must be conversant <clears throat> with standard books of moral and spiritual codes. Right? So again, a huge topic of discussion. <laughs> I won't get into it right now. But the idea is that, uh, you know, people in general, they need, uh, they need leaders. They may not admit, but they need leaders and they typically follow someone or the other. So it is essential who our leaders are and uh, by default our natural leaders are also there for us, our own parents, our school teachers, or the king or the executive state of head, uh, sorry, head of state. Right? Uh, so all these are natural leaders, right? Uh, and as per their, if they are corrupt <laughs> or if they are misbehaving, you know, what do you expect uh, their subordinates to do? So they are actually very, very responsible to train their subordinates. In fact, uh, you know, in Bhagavatam, Lord Rishabh, they've described Guru na sasyat, Tana sasyat. He's saying, don't become a guru, don't become a father, don't become a husband, uh, don't become a teacher. Uh, uh, what else is there, right? Uh, Partha Prabhu? Mother. Mother, yeah. So don't become these things unless and until you can take your dependence back home, back to Godhead. Unless you can provide them enough training, education, and good instruction for them to become, you know, Krishna conscious and go back and back to God. So don't become these things. <laughs> right? Otherwise, it's a great responsibility and you're not fulfilling that. Like that. So for that, what we need to do, we first of all need to be conversant with what are the spiritual codes, are the modern codes given in scriptures. Right? We need to first understand, realize, okay, this is the standard then we'll be able to apply ourselves and then naturally we can talk to others once we're following. Okay, and then Krishna, he himself gives an example 
राइट न मे पार्थास्ति कर्तव्यम न मे पार्थास्ति कर्तव्यम त्रिषु लोकेशु किञ्चना त्रिषु लोकेशु किञ्चना नानवाप्तम अवाप्तव्यम नानवाप्तम समाप्तव्यम वर्त एव च कर्मणि वर्त एव च कर्मणि ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज एवरीवन मैं रुद्र प्रभु जी यस प्लीज ओ सन ऑफ पार्था देयर इज नो वर्क प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर मी विद इन ऑल द थ्री प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स नॉर एम आई इन वांट ऑफ एनीथिंग nor have a, a need to obtain anything and that i am engaged in prescribed duties so krishna is giving his own example now he is he is preaching to arjuna <laughs> right that uh, you should not give up your prescribed duties or there is no reason for the self reliant soul to give up his prescribed duties and he gave the example of janak maharaj now he is giving his own example he is saying there is no work prescribed for me within the three planetary system for let alone this world right and nor am i in want of anything nor i have a need to obtain anything because he is self sufficient yet i am engaged in prescribed duties just to set the right example for others right and uh, i think this purport is really amazing there are some very you know detailed points i'm not sure how much we can get into it but let's try so i'll i'll directly you know jump to the description here the supreme lord is the controller of all other controllers he is the greatest of all uh diverse planetary leaders right everyone is under his control all living entities are delegated with particular power only by the supreme lord they are not supreme themselves now when we read the statement i mean it can be like a passing statement fine now the lord is controller is greatest etc etc but when we apply that some some bit of realization or some bit of trying to understand trying to realize right so the supreme lord is actually controller of all other controllers who are the other controllers who is controller in your own life can you think of some controllers of your life this might take 10 15 minutes so already sounding it out we might extend a little but yeah this is a very very important uh, discussion who are some of the controllers of your life anyone wants to share prabhu ji your relationships or relationships with others okay so yeah just describe you know okay uh, maybe my husband is one of the controllers because yeah he controls sometimes what right? we are also controllers to some extent uh, sorry we are also controllers of our life of course yes yes you are also controller of your own life and your environment someone else of course for for someone else also you might be controllers uh, yes. to certain extent but i'm asking the question is think of who are the controllers of your life to some degree not that they are fully in control but to some degree at least parents parents yeah. who else our family members family members okay and god also controls our life god is no, <laughs> biggest controller ah. even our guru prabhu ji our guru also our guru okay for that matter books and whatever we read you know whatever information we put in our mind is also a controller okay i'm surprised yeah. how ha ah, go on sorry someone else is saying something nature Prabhu, mind. Our mind is also dictating. Yes. Yeah. Where is? Uh, I don't know how many people here are, but I think uh, you know we spend a majority of our life somewhere, and I think that is missing. <laughs> Somebody controls that. Maya. Maya, of course, controls each and every one of us. What else? Nobody works here. Is it so? Bosses. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> right. In fact, uh, you know, we spend more than sixty, seventy percent of our waking time working. I mean, at least I can uh, tell about myself. 
uh, working for uh, you know I, I know some of you are fortunate not working that's great <laughs> not working as in uh, not working for some company or a boss that's that's fine but otherwise we spend so much of our time and energy and we're controlled by our bosses or our company right they dictate mm -hmm. uh, what we're supposed to do almost 8 to 10 hours or 12 hours sometimes in a day right so <clears throat> we have so many controllers right and if you think of it you know nobody likes to be controlled but then you know it is a very very relieving thought <laughs> that yes there is a supreme controller above them as well which is you know krishna who's all kind and sweet so the supreme lord is the controller of all other controllers be it demigods be it leaders of some other planet be it leader of the nation be it uh, you know your own bosses right he's the greatest all uh, greatest of all diverse planetary leaders also right so everyone is under his control if we just have faith in this word itself everyone is under his control right all entities are delegated with particular power only by the supreme lord they are not supreme themselves right just this line that this guy is not supreme himself right krishna is above him I remember uh, one of my friends actually. He is uh, he is uh, a TV actor. And he got into some films also from South India. So he was describing how uh, once he was uh, you know doing a shoot, and Anupam Kher had come, and he was also part of the same shoot. And suddenly he uh, you know he was next to him, and you know he was kind of fearful, uh, so that he doesn't make a mistake, etc. And then he was doing his lines very, very nicely. And Anubam Kher was like faltering most of the times. And you know, and he was getting angry, you know, and all of that. So he was, he was fearing. And then suddenly he closed his eyes and he thought, you know, he may be a great person, fine. But then he suddenly thought of Krishna. And, you know, so he, he could actually, you know, see Krishna standing so tall, <laughs> like hundreds of feet tall, uh, more than Anubam Kher. And he said, hey, why am I fearing this guy? Right, he may be some great personality, fine, but I am connected to Krishna, right? Who's the supreme? So why why do I need to, you know, be conscious or uh, not conscious, but be, but be having some complex or fear, you know, this person? So immediately he was completely relieved, and you know he could perform, give his shot very very nicely. So likewise in our you know day to day work, this is practical application. If we just have you know, uh, through practice, of course, not that it'll happen overnight, through practice by remembering the Lord. In fact, there was one friend of mine, again, she was, uh, you know, part of an organization where uh, this lady, her boss, she was very, very abusive. And, uh, you know, she was having a very difficult time. So she, what she did, just placed a picture of Narasimha Dev on her desk. Next time she came and for no reason, she started yelling, why did you not send this file to me first thing in the morning and this and that. And she was just looking at, uh, you know, Narasimha Dev. And then she went to her cabin and she told her, and, and she had, you know, <laughs> she could tell this to her boss because of, you know, meditating on the Lord. She's like, oh, I appreciate you're trying to correct me at every point in time. And, you know, this really helps me to grow, etc. She could say those words somehow. And she was completely flat, <laughs> right? All her, you know, anger subsided. And from next day onwards, even the boss started appreciating her so much more. So if we just understand that, yes, I may be in a very sticky situation, right? Things may be against me, right? Or it may be like looking like an impossible situation. But you always remember beyond the immediate controllers or even the situation, right? There is a supreme controller, Krishna, right? And if I just connect with him, I can be out of this very easily. Or I can at least be relieved of my anxiety, mental anxiety. Even if the situation remains the same, I am still not anxious. So, <clears throat> he is also worshipable by all demigods and is the supreme director of all directors. Therefore, he is transcendental to all kinds of material leaders and controllers and is worshipable by all. There is no one greater than him and he is the supreme cause of all causes. Right? So, whatever happens to me, Krishna is sanctioned. He is the supreme cause of all causes. He does not possess a bodily form like an ordinary living entity. There is no difference between his body and his soul. He is absolute. His, all his senses are transcendental. Any one of his senses can perform action of any other sense. Therefore, no one is greater to him or equal to him. 
His potencies are multifarious, right? It's not that Krishna is limited. He can help anyone else or everyone else, but in your situation, your situation is so great that he cannot help you. No, Krishna can. His energies are multifarious. He can do wonderful things <laughs> just by desiring, right? And thus, his deeds are automatically performed as a natural sequence. Since everything is in full opulence in personality of Godhead and is existing in full truth, there is no duty for the Supreme Lord, a Supreme Personality of Godhead to perform. One who must receive the result of uh, one must one who must receive the result of work has some designated duty. But one who has nothing to achieve within the three planetary systems certainly has no duty. And yet, Lord Krishna is engaged on the battlefield of Kurukshetra as the leaders of Kshatriyas, because Kshatriyas are duty bound to give protection to the distressed. Although he is above all regulations of revealed scriptures, he does not do anything that violates the revealed scriptures. So Krishna himself, to set the right example, he performs his duty. Rosie, you want to add something? No, there's a lot of things in the last few verses. But, uh, <laughs> this one point, uh, I mean, these verses are like so amazing and important from a practical point of view. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking on contemplating more on uh, the part where you focused of uh, the Lord being the controller of uh, you know, our lives yeah. uh, or you know having control over everything. I was just hearing in a lecture once, uh, one devotee was sharing that you know, sometimes we have so many problems in our life and uh, and we just go to the Lord and we say, Oh Lord, you know, look at this, you know, such a big problem in my life I am facing now today. And uh, we don't realize that the Supreme Lord is the controller of everything. And rather our approach should be, uh, oh problem, look how big the Supreme Lord is and how we can control everything. Right? So when we actually understand that the uh, Supreme Lord Krishna is in control of everything, then all the problems they will become insignificant. You know? So instead of going to the Lord and saying, oh, how, see how big the problem is, if we change that approach and go to the problem and say, how you know, big the Supreme Lord is. He can actually change things all over, you know, in uh, in the way he desires. There's nothing impossible for the Supreme Lord. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. So, controller, I mean, he, he can practically do anything. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. So, when we put that faith uh, in the Supreme Lord, uh, then our life will actually become very, very simple and easy. I'm really tempted to <laughs> you know, share a story, a practical story, but it's very late. Is, is it okay if we take five minutes? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So, uh, so this, is, this is a real life scenario. <clears throat> this is a proper disciple uh, from Germany. So, I think back in 1980s, uh, I think uh, Kurma Prabhu, uh, if I'm not mistaken, his name. So, back in 1980s, uh, you know, he was preaching and, uh, you know, there was this, uh, he, he was preaching to, you know, uh, different people there and there was this mafia, right? His, his uh, nephew was started going, uh, started going, attending this Prabhuji's class. And uh, one day this, this man, he came, uh, he met Prabhuji, uh, Prabhu in the church and he said, you leave my boy, otherwise it won't be good for you. So Kurma said, oh, we've not caught your boy or we have not you know, kept him by force. It's his own will that he's coming to our sessions. So if he doesn't want to, he can stop coming. But I won't deny him if he wants to come. And this guy got angry. I am telling you, right? It won't be good for you. So uh, Kurma was like, yeah, I don't care who you are. It's okay, right? Whatever you want to do, do. If he wishes to come, I am not going to deny him from coming. Right? If he doesn't wish, he can stop coming, not a problem. So they had, you know, this guy, this man was a little heavy and trying to argue, etc. And then he left. And then the father of the church came from, you know, behind. Like, are you serious? You know what this guy, who this guy is? You know, he'll blow you up. What are you doing? <laughs> so he's like, yes, he may be a big don or something. But, you know, Krishna is the controller. If Krishna wants me to die, I'll die today. Without him killing me also, I'll die. If Krishna wants me to live, he cannot do anything. No matter how much big he is, he cannot do anything. And the you know this guy left the place and he got in his car. And he had just gone a little further. The rival gang had set up a bomb in his car and you know the car blasted. 
guy died <laughs> so yeah, this probably was fearless completely fearless right depending he knew krishna is a controller right? and uh, you know the church father like <laughs> worried for him what will happen to you so yeah all right we'll stop here sorry for extending so much today but uh, yeah thank you for patiently listening and allowing me to cover all of this any questions or any comments and then if anyone is getting late there uh, it's okay you know if you want to you know announcements just yeah, before okay, okay ha huh? before everyone go there are some key announcements so tomorrow is balram purnima it's actually the appearance day of uh, lord balram uh so he is the giver of strength spiritual strength so if you're facing any trouble in your spiritual life if you want to advance any blockages pray to him especially on balram putting you go and pray to him he loves honey you can offer him some honey right and pray to him uh so you know he's very nice easily pleased also very uh, so you can you can pray to him and immediately you will realize or or you'll you'll feel that spiritual strength uh, what is lacking and that that will push you to advance very very quickly in spiritual life so that's tomorrow uh, and then uh, janmashtami is on 30th so we are trying to celebrate janmashtami a day before 29th at our place uh, in juhu so those who are not in the city you know we'll still have the online session <clears throat> but uh, for those who are here uh, we'll be sharing i'll be sharing that invite uh, with the address so you are most welcome to come down to our place i live in juhu uh in mumbai so you are most welcome and we'll have a program from uh, from 4:30 in the afternoon on sunday uh to about it'll go about 7:30 or 8 o'clock so uh, we'll be having uh you know different different activities uh, during that period of time and uh, if someone wants to like to offer some services also we will probably put out a list of services that you can do on that day or maybe a day before uh, just to prepare for the program so yeah i won't reveal much details about the program it's going to be very very interesting and engaging so uh, sunday uh, 4:30 in the afternoon 4:30 onwards maybe up till 7:30 or 8 so yeah we can we can all come together and celebrate the appearance day of uh, lord krishna janmashtami uh, and and next day obviously uh, janmashtami day is there so you guys can fast in fact even tomorrow i think uh, up till 12 o'clock up till noon right prabhuji at noon yes, we can fast uh, and that's very easy frankly speaking i mean we can without water also people can easily fast up to 12 uh, if if you still feel the need or some health issues you can actually take some water take some liquids and fast uh, till 12 noon but ideal is you know without water because it's just 12 noon on janmashtami day <clears throat> we typically do nirjal fasting the entire day up till midnight 12 but on that day also for somebody who cannot do it can do it on liquids uh, or eat some fruits if it's required or if your health doesn't permit so yeah prabhu you want to make any other announcements or add to this uh no i mean uh, i think many of uh, you all are we are all waiting for you know the day when we can meet <laughs> and have a program maybe in temple it couldn't happen Uh, recently the temple is still closed unfortunately all over india it seems <laughs> temples are open but in mumbai uh, we're still having to wait for the temple to open so it's a great opportunity we can uh, uh, yeah, come together and as you were saying there'll be services also and uh, it's a practical thing when we engage do some service for the lord when it's the lord is appearing his appearance day if we can do something practical you know uh, as a service it's a very very great thing so uh, please look forward for uh, coming for the program and participating in doing services uh, our whole program bhakti is translated as devotional service so that's something that we should all look forward to whenever we assemble we come together so either in the form of hearing listening uh, hearing or chanting or doing something practical uh these are all different angas or you know parts the different nine processes of devotion service so uh it will be great if everyone can you know come and participate yeah even so, even if you're not able to do anything else if you want to offer something to the lord you can cook you can cook something and offer it to your own deities if you're at your house if you want to offer it here you can come and offer it here as well 
uh, we will we are planning hopefully it works out by krishna's uh, will we are planning a small abhishek as well so let's see how it goes <clears throat> and i i think it'll be a very nice engaging uh, session and we've also invited a very senior devotee from the temple to speak so you yeah take take you know opportunity to hear to you know such senior devotees i think it's really nice and rare so yeah try and try and come for the program i will still it's a sunday we'll still stream it online so saturday program will be there uh, on 28 and 29 sundays when we are having this so for those who cannot come uh, i mean in mumbai is a bit request everyone to come <clears throat> but otherwise uh, we'll try and have the live streaming also online through zoom or something okay so yeah any questions any thoughts or any reflections or any inquiry about uh, the uh, festival program itself you can you can we can discuss those who are getting late they can drop if they have something urgent to catch to catch up with Prabhuji, when are you going to put the service, uh, you know, list of different services for the, you know, 29th? And do it between today and tomorrow itself, so that, uh, you know, people are mentally prepared and, you know, ready for the next week as well. And you can volunteer, uh, maybe on the group itself or, uh, you know, personally send a message that, okay, you would like to do something. So that's also fine. Okay, Prabhuji, one question. Uh, was role in our reading class mm -hmm. like tomorrow is balram purnima and balram ji was born to rohini mata uh, then whom subhadra ji was born like she was yog maya uh, like, so who was mother of so subhadra uh, marani she was born to mother yashoda <clears throat> actually okay. and then she was swapped when Vasudev carried Krishna, got back the girl child, right? So that was Yog Maya essentially. Uh, yeah, and then later, I think, uh, hmm. later, I think, when uh, Krishna, uh, Krishna even restored you know, the other sons back to Devki, right? Who were killed by Kamsa. So, as such, she is, she is daughter of Devki, right? Uh, because you know the girl child was placed next to Devki as you know somebody born to Devki, but I think originally she was born to Mother Yashoda. Even I am not aware that how the dynamics were at that point in time. That you know because I, we don't hear anything of Subhadra Marani's childhood etc. We don't hear. Even I don't have much information on that. But otherwise, I know she being Yog Maya, she was actually born to Mother Yashoda and then swapped. Uh, you know when Krishna was carried to Vindavan and. Yogmaya was brought back to uh, you know, Devki and Vasudev, yeah. And maybe when Krishna actually restored all the six sons who had been killed, I'm not sure if that time Subhadra Marani was also restored or because we don't hear anything of her childhood. So I have no information on that. Prabhuji, if you have any, please share. At least I don't have uh, much information on Subhadra Mahani's childhood. No, neither do I. Does that, is that okay, uh, Pallavi? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there are no other questions or comments, we'll stop here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.